Destiny. London, 1893. In London, 1893, a young girl named Destiny Stewart was just walking through the crowded city street when she saw a theft taking place so she tried to stop it. The trouble was she was only nine years old and there wasn't much she could do to stop it. I wish I was older, she said to herself. A kindly gentleman stopped to talk to her. What's your name, little one? he asked her. Destiny Stewart, sir, he rep she replied. Well, young Destiny, you don't want to go wishing your life away. Enjoy your childhood while you can, he advised her. Thank you, sir, said Destiny. Oh, please, Destiny, don't call me sir. The name's Stephen Marshall, the gentleman told her politely and went on his way. Having received some excellent advice to enjoy being a child, Destiny went home to play with her porcelain dolls, which she loved and treasured like they were younger brothers and sisters. While she was now having the good childhood she'd been advised to have, she couldn't help wondering what her future might hold. Her mother, Ellie, even wanted her to have the best childhood she could, and constantly advised her not to think so much about the future. Little did either of them know, but a family tragedy was soon to change all that, and Destiny's life, as she knew it, was about to take a turn for the unexpected, as her mother was trampled by horses and killed, leaving her orphaned. As her father passed away when she was free, the police were about to toss her into a workhouse until Stephen Marshall stepped in to put a stop to it by adopting her to be his daughter and she was very appreciative of this gesture. She was devastated by the death of her mother and Stephen understood this, which was why he allowed her to grieve Ellie's untimely demise. In the next three months, Destiny's life was back on track, and she was happy in Stephen's care. And she came to know him and love him as her new father. If you enjoyed this story, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and listening and have us a magical time. Destiny 2, obviously by me. London, 1900. After seven years of the finest love any random man could give her, Destiny Stewart was now 16 years old and about to leave her compulsory education behind. Thanks to Stephen Marshall, her adoptive father, she had a place at his old school, Norton High which offered education for boys and girls up to sixth form, if needed. Over the last seven years, Destiny had become a very well-educated and respected member of the community. It was June 1900, and she was ready to leave school behind and start her new life as a young woman of independence. While Stephen was proud of her accomplishments, and wasn't ready to say goodbye to her yet, but he knew she was grateful to him for all he'd done for her.
over the time she'd been in his care and respected that she felt like she was ready to move on so he gave her some money to rent a flat a few blocks away and was going to help her move in after leaving school. The following Friday, he attended her leavers assembly and was full of pride as she walked across the stage to collect her leavers awards and portfolio. She was really proud to have finished her full-time education and was about to enter the real world. Shortly after leaving school, she was moving into her own flat with help from Stephen and three of her new neighbours. To thank them all for helping her to move in, she invited them to stay for coffee and cakes. Stephen hugged her. Your mother and father would be proud of your love, he told her. I thought you were her father, sir, said Tom Leslie. Tom Le said Tom Leslie. Tom Lesser, Tom Leslie, her neighbour from number six, her birth parent Sonny. Her father died when she was three and her mother died seven years ago. I took her under my wing shortly following that event. And I'm glad I did, he told him. I'm glad you did too, father. Life's been great with you, said Destiny. Stephen smiled. Destiny, love. I used to work with your birth father. We were best friends, and when he married your mother, I was his best man. And then, 16 years ago, at the time of your birth, they appointed me your godfather, he told her. Destiny was surprised to hear this news. You're my godfather? She repeated. Yes, sweetheart, and I promised them I'd bring you up if anything happened to them. Destiny was relieved to find this out and appreciated Stephen all the more for it, and hugged him. Three weeks later, Destiny found herself a job at the local bookshop, which was enough to feed, clothe and house her for a few years, before she would have to move away again. A week later, tragedy would once again strike as Stephen's life was taken after being hit by a train while trying to rescue a stray cat from the same fate. At his funeral, she gave a strong and powerful eulogy, and everyone thought it was very moving. Even Stephen's lawyer, who told her she'd inherited all of Stephen's money and possessions, including his house, which she accepted gracefully. Another three weeks later, she moved back into Stephen's house and found herself a boyfriend to share the love with. His name was Freddie King, and he loved her for who she was and not just her money uh, and not just for her money it was stated in Stephen's will that it was his wish that she found a man to share the love with and she'd done just that if you enjoyed this video please like comment share and subscribe there will be another one soon. Until then, guys, thanks for watching and have a magical time. Destiny 3 London, 1905 After five long years, Destiny was now happily married to her husband, Terry Ball, making her Destiny Ball, having taken his family name upon marrying into his family three years earlier. 
It was a very happy time for them as Destiny was pregnant with their first child and they couldn't wait to have their son or daughter. Oh Terry, this is so exciting. We're going to have a baby, said Destiny. I know, Destiny. Parenthood is going to be a fun new experience for both of us, Terry agreed. It was early days yet, as they'd only just learned of, the preg of their pregnancy, but they'd already chosen names. They'd agreed to... They'd agreed on the name Crystal if they had a daughter, and Dennis if they had a son. Everyone thought their name choices were very strange considering their family name was Ball, and if they had a son, they were going to call him Dennis. <laughs> and if they had a daughter, they were going to name her Crystal. It was currently October the 14th. That should be short. Lee. Shortly. After Destiny's 21st birthday, making her legally an adult when she was married and nine months away from becoming a mother. As the months went by, the pregnancy progressed very smoothly. Just before Christmas, Terry decided to move his wife and unborn child to the Scottish countryside for a better place to raise their child. Scotland, 1906. It was now four months after the move to Scotland and Destiny was now five months pregnant, which meant they needed to get the nursery ready for their baby's arrival in three months time. That should mean she's six months pregnant, not five. Okay, how fast? They stood back to admire their handiwork. Three months later, Destiny gave birth to their daughter, who they named Crystal, as agreed nine months ago. Eight months. Okay. And they loved her to pieces. Everyone thought Crystal was a beautiful baby. Three more months later, Destiny celebrated her 22nd birthday, and it was a great party. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching and have us a magical time. Crystal, a spin-off from Destiny. I'm be there by me. Scotland, 1915. Crystal Ball was the young daughter of Destiny and Terry Ball. She was nine years old and lived in Glasgow with them and her newborn brother Dennis, whom she loved to pieces and enjoyed helping them look after him. However, so she could be a normal girl, they hired a nanny to help take care of him which she appreciated. She was out with her friends Mary Ellis and Olivia Norris, with whom she was best friends. They'd just finished lunch at Dixon's Cafe, just outside town, and were parting ways for the day, so they said goodbye and went their separate ways. As she was making her way home, her eyes clouded over and she saw a vision of Terry being murdered by a robber, which caused her to collapse. She woke up three hours later to find Terry sitting next to her on the sofa. Father, is that you? she asked. Of course it's me, sweetie. Are you feeling alright? replied Terry. 
Destiny entered with Dennis. Sleeping Beauty is awake, she said, seeing how panicked she was. Whatever is the matter? She asked. Mother, we have to secure the house. Crystal burst out. Why? asked Destiny. Terry took hold of Dennis and went to feed him. Father's going to be attacked and killed by a robber. Crystal told her. Destiny looked at her, shocked. How do you know this? She asked. I had a vision of it while walking home. That's why I collapsed, replied Crystal. Destiny thought Crystal was making a sick joke and smacked her. Don't ever make jokes like that again, that's very naughty, she scolded. I'm not joking, mother. It's serious, we have to keep father from being murdered. Crystal insisted. Destiny grabbed her up. You get to bed this minute. How dare you keep this nonsense up? She scolded. As Crystal made her way sadly upstairs, Terry brought Dennis back in and placed him in his playpen. What was that about, honey? He asked. Crystal was being naughty, dear. She was making up stories about, about being a seer. She pretended to predict a robber breaking in, attacking and killing you. Destiny told him. I see. Wait, what? He replied. Don't worry, I sent her to bed. She told him. I don't think Crystal was lying about that at all. She did look genuinely panicked over something, he replied. Crystal came down to apologise, but Destiny pulled her into a hug. Later that afternoon, Crystal's vision came true, as a robber actually did break in and attack Terry. He tried to defend himself, but the robber pinned him down and jammed a knife into his chest, killing him instantly. This caused great sadness and depression in the family, especially for Destiny, who had just become a widow, and her children, who were going to grow up without a father. This was especially true of Dennis, as he barely got to know his father. This meant the nanny, Sophie Smith, was now needed to help raise Crystal as well until she turned 16, and wouldn't need a nanny anymore. Destiny now knew she had been wrong to punish Crystal for lying about her vision, when she had been telling the truth all along. Two weeks after the funeral, she sat Crystal down for a chat and told her that her great-grandmother had also been a seer. These things often skip a couple of generations, she told her. So Nana wasn't a seer either? asked Crystal. No, darling. In fact, you're the first seer in three generations. Destiny told her. Sophie entered with Dennis. Crystal, sweetie, she called. Yes, Sophie? replied Crystal. I'm taking Dennis for a walk. Would you like to join us? asked Sophie. Destiny stepped in. Go on, darling. You need some fresh air. She told her gently. So she did join in. So she did join Sophie and Dennis on their walk. Destiny decided to go with them, knowing she needed fresh air too. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have us a magical time.
Destiny 4. Scotland, 1919. Destiny Ball was a widow who had been raising her children, Crystal and Dennis, purely with the assistance of their governess, Sophie, for the last four years. Destiny was now teaching at Longbow School as their basic level mathematics teacher, meaning she was teaching the subject to 11 to 14 year olds. At a school that educated until the age of 16, However, Crystal was now, no, sorry, Crystal, her now 13-year-old daughter, was fed up of being told what to do by a nanny, for whom she was too old at her age. You're not old enough to care for yourself yet, she'd tell her every time it came into conversation. Both she and Sophie thought it was good for both Destiny's, for both of Destiny's children to share a nanny. Dennis was now four and still coming to terms with his father's death, as it was a lot to take in at his age. You know Daddy loves you very much and is very proud of you, Destiny, Sophie and Crystal would tell him many times a day, which comforted him. One Sunday, Destiny was home alone with Dennis whilst Crystal and Sophie were out on an errand for her and was loving every moment of her son's company. They sat there doing puzzles and playing, I spy, for three hours. Four hours later, she was going to get Dennis ready for bed, when Sophie took over to do her job as the nanny, and within half an hour, she'd bathed Dennis and put him to bed. What time should I be in bed? asked Crystal. You know you have to be in bed by nine, young lady, Sophie told her. So Crystal opened her mouth to argue, but Destiny shot her a warning look. Crystal, if you're going to argue about it, you can jolly well get off the bed now, she scolded. Mother, I don't need a nanny, Crystal moaned. Sophie took her by the hand. You heard what your mother said. Come on, I'm putting you to bed. She told her firmly and put her up to bed. Thirteen years old and having to be sent to bed early like a toddler, she scolded. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. There will be another one soon. Until then, thanks for watching and have us a magical time. Destiny 5, possibly by me, Scotland 1924, Destiny Ball had recently celebrated her 40th birthday and it was the most beautiful birthday she'd ever had. She spent it with her friends and family, meaning her now 18 year old daughter Crystal and her now 9 year old son Dennis, who gave her the best day ever which she very much appreciated. Now all that fun and celebrating was over and their lives continued as normal. Another change that had happened recently was Sophie had left her job as their nanny, which was just as well because she decided her son was too old for a nanny anymore and Crystal stopped needing a nanny two years ago. However, Destiny was pleasantly surprised when she learned Crystal had applied to nanny school to learn to be a nanny. What's brought this on, darling? She asked out of curiosity. 
Having Sophie as our nanny for eight years inspired me to go for it. Crystal replied honestly, Well, I'm very proud of you, sweetheart, said Destiny. She decided to reveal to her children the reason for Sophie leaving them was that she'd been offered a job at Madame, Puddle, at Madame Puddle Gum's Nanny Academy as one of their instructors and decided to accept their offer. She then sat down with Crystal and went through her student application to that same nanny school and helped her to get it filled and mailed out. Let's hope you get into Madame Puddle Gums, my sweetie, she said. Three weeks later, she watched proudly as Crystal received her acceptance letter from Madame Puddle Gums Nanny Academy and was really excited for her. Within two days of the letter arriving, Sophie came to pay them a visit and told them she'd be serving as the first year instructor, meaning Crystal was going to be in her class at Madame Puddle Gums. Destiny then chimed in. I was pleasantly surprised when Crystal told me this. She told Sophie. Later, Destiny was home alone as both her children were out with friends, giving her a chance to relax as Madame Puddlegum's Academy was in London. She had to move the family back to England. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. There will be another one soon. Until then, thanks for watching and have us a magical time. Crystal, Nanny in Training, obviously, by me. London, 1925. Crystal Ball was a beautiful young woman of 19 years old who was now one year into her nanny training at Madame Puddle Gum's Nanny Academy, placing her in the second year of that course. Now under the instruction of Nurse Matilda Jones, and was constantly impressing her with how much she'd learned in the past year and two weeks. Crystal then revealed she was currently in the part-time employment of the Lowell family as their part-time nanny, gaining experience in it along the way. Crystal, I'm very impressed you're doing this on top of your training, she told her. Madam Puddlegum recommended it as part of my training, Crystal told her. And you're doing a good job with it as well, I hear, Nurse Matilda told her. During the lunch break, Nurse Sophie, the first year instructor, caught up with her. So, Crystal, how's your second year going so far? She asked. It's going really well, thanks, Nurse. Uh, it's going really well, thanks. Nurse Matilda is really impressed with me. She told her, I'm glad to hear it. You remind me of me when I was a student here. Nurse Sophie told her. After lunch, she was summoned by Madame Puddlegum. So off she went to see what she wanted. The Lowells are really pleased with your work, dearie. She told her. I'm glad they feel that way, Madame Puddlegum, replied Crystal. In fact, they're so pleased they've offered you a permanent position as their full-time nanny when you qualify, Madame Puddlegum told her. Upon hearing this, Crystal immediately wrote uh, to the Lowells 
so yeah, wrote the wrote the laws a letter accepting their job offer when she graduated from the academy. With their meeting out of the way, Crystal returned to class and, as usual, performed beyond the expectations of Nurse Matilda and her fellow second-year students. She far exceeded the expectations of everyone who saw her perform in the practical sessions and during every theoretical exam. She took passing with the highest pass mark possible the school offered. Destiny came to visit her just before Christmas and was really proud of her. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. And until the next one, thanks for watching and have us a magical time. Destiny 6 London, 1933 Destiny Ball was living in London with her son Dennis and daughter Crystal, who were unable to land jobs since the Great Depression took over the world. Even Destiny had been made redundant due to the company she worked for going out of business. Crystal, however, was a nanny down on her luck as she'd had to leave her job with the Cameron family because they could no longer afford to pay her. All out of work because of the depression had left them feeling very depressed. This also meant Dennis wasn't able to go to university, unable to afford it, nor could he get a job due to the current state of the world. One day, as they made their way around London, Crystal noticed a family who needed her help and went to offer them her services as a nanny, but they couldn't afford to pay her. I'm volunteering my services as a nanny, she told the father, but he still rejected her offer. It wasn't long before they all found voluntary jobs. A supermarket accepted Destiny's offer for free help in the shop on the spot. The Collins family offered Crystal a voluntary position as the nanny for his children, and she accepted. There should be their children, without a second thought. Dennis, on the other hand, was offered a free place at Oxford, which meant he was to move to Oxfordshire to attend the university. Destiny and Crystal were very proud of him for getting into Oxford, free of charge, and happily saw him off. Two weeks later, Destiny was earning money again, meaning her employer had given her paid work, but she was only making seven shillings a week, which was good enough for her and her family to live on. Even Crystal was earning money uh, for her nanny services to the Collins family, as Mr. Collins was back at work and could pay her nine shillings a week, which she appreciated. After a few weeks, Destiny decided it was time to move out of London, and Crystal agreed, suggesting they move to the Isle of Wight, so they handed in their notices and wrote to Dennis, letting him know of the move. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. There will be another one soon. Until then, thanks for watching and have us a magical time.
Bristol and the Orphans of War. By me, Isle of Wight, 1939. Crystal Ball moved with her mother Destiny to the Isle of Wight six years earlier and was happy living her life safely in the middle of nowhere. The thing is, war was breaking out and children were being evacuated from the city and she received a call from an evacuation officer who had three children with her. Mrs Smith had brought the Buckley children to be placed into her care. So who do I have here? She asked happily. Mrs. Smith, pointed each, Mrs. Smith pointed each child out in turn. The eldest brother was Simon, the youngest brother was Ryan, and their baby sister Lily. And she adored them all instantly. She was fostering three beautiful children during the war, and being a qualified caregiver made her more than qualified to care for her three foster children. Destiny was proud of her for taking in three needy children during the hard times. As well as being a temporary grandmother, baby Lily was sleeping at the moment, so everybody needed to be quiet. When she was up, Crystal changed and fed her, giving confidence to her foster son Simon and Ryan, who were amazed at how she looked after their sister. They even got their true confirmation of her commitment to caring for all three of them as she made them a lovely family dinner to welcome them all to their new home. I'm a nanny, my lovelies, she told them during dinner. As they finished their meal, the doorbell rang and she answered it to find her younger brother Dennis on the step and led him through. She soon gathered the kids together and introduced them to their new fun-loving foster uncle and they were very happy to meet each other. Crystal was very keen to give her foster children the best life she could. Although Simon was seven and Ryan was five, they were young enough to appreciate her good-heartedness as well as remember their birth parents whilst Lily was only six months old. a contradiction to later on but you know one year old and too young to remember their birth parents However, they knew how much Crystal loved them, and even though they weren't actually her children. Two years later, Crystal Ball had spent the last two years raising the three Buckley children, who were now very happy in her care. She was out in the country with them to give them some fresh air. They were all enjoying each other's company. Lily was holding tightly to her hand while Simon and Ryan walked a little ahead, but stayed close. They stopped by the pond so Lily could feed the ducks. Remember, darling, don't go too close to the edge, she reminded her. I won't, mummy, replied Lily. Good girl. Crystal praised her and gave her a bag of bread and watched happily as she threw bread to the ducks. When they arrived home, she found a telegram from the war office informing them of the deaths of the children's parents. This then made Crystal want to adopt them as her own, considering how much they all loved each other. And they had no one left in London. For a while, she comforted them about it, although Lily had no memory of them. As far as she was concerned, Crystal was her mother seeing as she was the only mother Lily had ever known. A few weeks later, their family lives truly began. Even the boys were happy to have a new mother. Uh, 
and that's Crystal and the Orphans of War. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. There will be another one soon. Until then, thanks for watching and have us a magical time. Destiny 7. I'll see if I meet. Isle of Wight, 1941. Destiny Ball was a proud mother and grandmother to her daughter Crystal's three adopted children, Simon, Ryan and Lily, who were sent to stay with her during the war in 1939 and adopted by Crystal earlier that same year after their birth mother died, leaving them orphaned. She knew Simon and Ryan felt lost because they were old enough to know their birth mother. Lily, on the other hand, was nearly a year old. three years old and too young to even remember her so felt right at home with Crystal. Every time her brothers mentioned something about missing their mother, Lily would remind them that Crystal was their mother now. This made her feel sorry for Crystal, that only her three-year-old daughter appreciated her and wanted to help. Even Dennis noticed and felt bad for his sister and wanted to help them all. They were all having a nice time by the pond as a family. Dennis was canoeing with Lily after hiring a canoe to take her for a ride. Destiny turned to Crystal. You're doing a great job with the children, darling. She told her proudly. Thanks, Mum, but I don't feel as though I've done well enough for the boys. Only Lily appreciates me, Crystal replied sadly. The boys were feeding the ducks when they ran out of bread. Remember when Mother packed plenty of bread? Simon asked Ryan. Yeah, I miss her, replied Ryan, just as Dennis and Lily were coming off the canoe. And both threw the boys a look. Crystal's our mummy now, Lily reminded them. You need to start showing her your appreciation. It's been two years since you came to us. But yes, yeah, so you need to start showing her your appreciation. It's been two years since you came to us, Dennis told them. To this, they had no reply. When they got home, Destiny and Crystal sat the boys down to chat about their feelings. They assured them they understood they were still upset about their birth mother's death and loved them to pieces as their new mother and grandmother. We do appreciate what Crystal's doing for us, said Simon. We just need time to mourn our mother, said Ryan. She looked over, he looked over at Lily. Lily's too young to have known her. She was only one when she died. We understand her accepting Crystal as her mother straight away, he added. Crystal looked at them. I love you boys, so, uh, so I'll give you time to mourn your birth mother's memory. She replied and hugged them. The boys appreciated being left alone for a few days, and Destiny, who had lost both her parents as a child, stepped in to coach them in it. 
After two weeks, the boys started accepting their new lives as Crystal's children and were as quick as Lily to accept the offer for a trip to the pond. They were keeping Lily entertained at the moment. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. There will be another one soon. Until then, thanks for watching and have us a magical time. Aunt Crystal, Isle of Wight, 1943. Crystal Ball was the proud daughter of Destiny, sister of Dennis, and adopted mother of Simon, Ryan, and Lily Ball. She was also the proud sister-in-law of Dennis's wife, Mitzi, and aunt of their daughter, Sandra, her three-month-old niece, who she loved to pieces. This made Simon and Ryan jealous because they weren't getting enough attention. But Lily didn't mind being on her own, as she understood Sandra required round-the-clock care. By this time, Simon was ten and Ryan was eight, and should have understood about it from four years before. It was Crystal who caught them trying to hurt her while Lily tried to shield her from their wrath. Stop it, you two! Leave her alone! Lily screamed at them. She intervened with the help of Dennis and Mitzi, who were furious with the boys for their behaviour. Destiny took hold of Lily whilst Crystal disciplined her sons. She dragged them up to their room and grounded them for two weeks each. But mother, that's not fair, complained Simon. It's very fair, young man. What's not fair, however, is the fact you think it's okay to behave this way just because of Sandra. She's a baby, for goodness sake. On top of that, she's your cousin. She scolded. It's her fault she's here. We didn't want a cousin, said Ryan. Don't talk such rubbish. How could it possibly be Sandra's fault? You two are jealous of her because she's here, she scolded. Well, she is getting all the attention, says Simon. Enough of that. Sandra's a baby. She needs round-the-clock care. The boys went silent. They knew they'd behave badly about this, and it was their fault. Crystal was able to get them to apologise to Dennis and Missy for their behaviour. But when they tried getting apologies for Sandra, the boys laughed and said, <laughs> She's a baby, so she wouldn't understand it. This got them the cross arms from Destiny, Crystal, Dennis, Mitzi and Lily, letting them know that nobody, including their own little sister, was taking their attitude. Boys, don't start with that attitude again, Crystal warned them. Lily came and stood by her. Ryan smiled cheekily at her. What are you going to do, Lily? Cute us? Before anybody could stop her, Lily had smacked both boys in the lips. Don't you give me any of that lip, misters, she scolded them. Destiny restrained her before she could hit them again. Everybody was shocked by her display of violence. Destiny sat Lily on the kitchen side. Crystal came over. That was very naughty, Lily. I'm very disappointed in you. Smacking your brothers like that was a very poor example to set for Sandra, she told her gently.
as it was her first account of naughtiness. She got her down and pointed to the stairs. Go to your room and think about what you've done, she told her. Simon stepped in. Wait a minute, mother. She busted our lips because Ryan got lippy with her after we refused to ap apologies to little Sandra to little Sandy here. He told her, getting Lily off the hook. Ryan was holding Sandra at the moment. Besides, the way she told us off was cute, added Ryan. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching and have us a magical time. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Destiny Verse section of some magical story time. And it is now time to get into the next installment of that universe, and that shall be Lily, spun off from Crystal. Isle of Wight, 1945. Lily Ball was the youngest of three children adopted by Crystal Ball during the Second World War as her only daughter. She was adopted along with her two older brothers Simon and Ryan in 1941 after their birth mother was killed in the war. After having been placed in Crystal's care as a baby in 1939, it had been six years since then and four years since their adoption. She was now a very beautiful and happy seven-year-old with long silky black hair and brilliant blue eyes and was doing really well in school. The war was now over and there were plans for moving back to London in a couple of years. At this point, she was playing happily with her brothers Simon and Ryan in their games room. On top of all that, she was so proud of Simon for getting accepted into Sherlock's that summer, just as the war was drawing to a close, and he was ele as he was eleven and ready to attend. That was until one day when tragedy struck as Ryan fell seriously ill with polio and had to be sent away for treatment. Lily was really upset by this outcome and began really worrying her ten-year-old brother was going to die. Destiny, Crystal, Dennis and Simon tried to comfort her, but this proved impossible. As she was so cut up about it, she couldn't even eat or sleep. Crystal was sitting with her, trying to comfort her, but she couldn't help bursting into tears over her terminally ill son. Even Mitzi couldn't help. Hard as she tried, she was unsuccessful. Sandra, their two-year-old cousin, was growing more worried about her every time. She saw her in floods of tears. Simon, although upset about his brother's illness, was trying to be strong for him by spending lots of time with Lily, telling her stories, taking her for walks around the pond and building sandcastles with her at the beach. But even he couldn't keep it together. Then, one day, they received the worst news in the world. Ryan had unfortunately lost his battle with polio and passed away, which devastated everyone especially Lily, who had the feeling they were going to lose him anyway. 
She was so upset she couldn't walk past his room without crying afterwards. At the funeral, they all got up and said something lovely about him, but Lily couldn't bear to read hers. So the vicar read it for her and teared up because of all the lovely things she said about him. Crystal was so touched by Lily's lovely eulogy, she picked her up and hugged her tightly. Even Simon thought it was special enough to deserve a massive hug. Ryan would be so proud of you, he told her. Destiny was really proud of her. You are so very, you are just so very sweet, baby, she told her lovingly before joining the family hug. Joining in the family hug. Now I realise this is a sad instalment towards the end. But if you enjoyed this story, this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a some magical time. Hey guys, and welcome to another instalment in the Destiny Verse for the Symmetrical Story Time. Our thirteenth instalment, as a matter of fact, overall. But it's the eighth story in the mainline series, so that makes it Destiny Eight, London, nineteen forty-six. It was a crisp September morning in the Ball household, and Destiny was helping Crystal to get Lily up and ready for school, but they were both having a hard time, because she was refusing to move from her bed. You are being very naughty this morning, Lily. We are not having this from you, do you understand? Destiny scolded. If you're not up in five minutes, you won't be going to Ali's party, Crystal scolded. At the prospect of being grounded from attending her friend's party, Lily was up and ready like a gunshot. I don't want to be grounded, she said to herself, wolfed down her breakfast, cleaned her teeth, apologised to Destiny and Crystal for her behaviour, before kissing them goodbye and rushing off to school. An hour later, Destiny was out doing her grocery shopping when she ran into her old friend Kyle Stetson, who was out with his wife Deborah, with their eldest son Bobby, who were out buying birthday gifts for Bobby's daughter Peach, who was turning six in a few days. She stopped to talk to them for five minutes. As she got back to her shopping, she saw Dennis and stopped to chat with him for a bit. Afterwards, she finished her shopping and went home to pack it away. I am so proud to have such a loving and supportive family. Lily's just a child, but I'm proud of her. I'm proud to have her as a granddaughter, she said to herself. That evening, the whole family were all there and having a wonderful time together. Destiny was sitting there cuddling Lily like a toddler. But Lily loved being treated that way. Crystal shook her head. Lily, you're eight years old, for heaven's sake. Surely you don't like being treated like a two-year-old, she said with a laugh. I'm just getting one of Gran's special cuddles, mother, replied Lily. Crystal gazed at her daughter. Destiny looked back at her. Crystal, there's nothing strange about me giving Lily a cuddle, she said firmly. I never said there was, mother. 
but there's cuddling her and then and there's wrapping her in a baby blanket and rocking her on your knee replied crystal destiny gave her the old don't take that tone look don't you take that tone with me or you'll go over my knee young lady she scolded making lily laugh I'm too old for that, said Crystal. Nonsense, you're never too old to go over your mother's knee, replied Destiny. Lily wagged her finger. Naughty mummy, you should know, you should know how to set examples for your little girl. That's me, by the way, <laughs> she scolded. Destiny was shocked. My goodness, Lily, parenting your own mother, are you? You're just a child, she said. Sometimes I have to replied Lily. <laughs> and that was Destiny 8. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Join me next time for another story. But until then, if you enjoyed this video, uh, sorry, uh, thanks for watching and have us a magical time. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Destiny Verse category of some magical story time. The 14th installment of the franchise overall starts here. This is Crystal's Big Idea. The fifth of that series. London, 1948. Crystal Ball was a very loving mother to her adoptive daughter Lily, who was now 10 years old. Crystal was planning a big surprise for her and had been for some time with the help of Destiny. And Dennis, I hope Lily likes her surprise, says Dennis. She's been feeling down lately, so I thought of this as a way to cheer her up, replied Crystal. It's a brilliant idea, sweetheart, but what if it doesn't go according to plan, said Destiny. I've tried talking to her, but she couldn't bring herself to tell me why she was feeling down, replied Crystal. They all got to work getting everything ready for the surprise. Crystal had planned for Lily, a party to show her how much they loved her. It was a huge undertaking and took them until half past three to finish preparing and dim the lights and drew the curtains. When they heard Lily come in the front door and waited for her to walk through to the dining room before springing out on her shouting, Surprise! She was most pleasantly surprised, and the big cheek and and a big cheeky smile spread across her face. They were pleased to see her back to normal, but still parted anyway. Crystal could tell she was enjoying herself and grabbed her into a special hug. I love you very much, my darling, she told her before showering her with kisses. I love you all too. 
and thanks for the party, replied Lily. You're more than welcome, baby, replied Destiny. You are a beautiful niece, replied Dennis. And they all hugged her. Crystal gave her a smile. It was my idea, my sweet angel. I wanted to cheer you up after feeling down for about a week. She told her, And you have certainly done that, replied Lily, laughing. Crystal laughed with her while taking her hand and dancing with her. That night, as Crystal put Lily to bed, they talked. And she came clean about why she'd felt down for a week, and they both laughed at it until they were asleep in each other's arms. The next day, Crystal decided not to send Lily to school, but let her sleep longer. So she got up and went to do some housework. My little girl is so sweet, she said with pride. Now, that was Crystal's big idea, and if you thought it was more about Lily than Crystal, hmm, I'm sorry. But just wait until the next instalment, which will come as soon as. But until then, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a magical time. Hey guys, and um, welcome back to the Destinyverse category of some magical story time. The show where I come on and read stories that I have written or retell certain ones. So we're now up, we're on the Destiny, yeah, so we're now up to the, the uh, 15th of these stories overall. But the second of the Lily sub-series, which would be Lily at 14. London, 1952. Lily Ball had just celebrated her 14th birthday and was the oldest, cleverest and prettiest girl in her class at school. All the boys liked her and all wanted to date her but she was unsure if she was ready to start dating yet. It was three o'clock in the afternoon and she was walking home with her best friends, Jane Rogers, a redhead with long frizzy hair, and donned pink uniform and liked scary stories, and Thomas Jones, a sporty young blonde boy with short spiky hair who played goalie on the school football team. These were the only two in her class who truly understood her and knew she wasn't ready for a relationship yet. She was very happy in her life, which was perfect according to her. She had a very loving and supportive family, even though she was adopted by them during the war, but that didn't matter. Crystal was a loving mother to her, and always had been since she took her in as an evacuee during the war, when she wasn't even a year old yet. And her older brothers Ryan and Simon were four and five. She was adopted with them two years into the war. Destiny was likewise as her grandmother, who adored everything about her, and Dennis was the best uncle she could have hoped for. 
as it was loads of fun. She had an aunt and cousins on his side of the family too, but she hardly saw them. Her brother sadly became ill and died, while she was still a young child. Two major changes had taken place over the past four years. The first change was Crystal married a nice young man named Norman, giving her a father figure to look up to as well as a mother. And the second change was that, thanks to this, she was now big sister to his three-year-old son, Daniel, and she just loved him to pieces. As they arrived outside the house, she hugged her two best friends goodbye and entered the house. As soon as she opened the front door, Daniel ran into her arms and she scooped him up. Hello, baby, she said as she hugged him tightly. She shut the door and carried him into the living room where Crystal relieved her of him and gestured towards an empty seat on the sofa. How was school today, sweetheart? she asked. It was very quiet considering there are 16 first formers in the place who were usually very noisy, replied Lily. I see, so you had no trouble taming them? said Crystal. None at all, replied Lily. Did the headmaster have the chat with you? asked Crystal. He did, actually, and he told me he thinks I'm ready to leave school and start work, replied Lily. I agree with him, darling. You are more than ready to enter the real world, replied Crystal. The question is, are there potential employers looking for help? asked Lily. Yes, there are, sweetheart. All local shops looking for new employees. They pay fairly. You should look into them, Crystal told her. The next day, Lily went to apply in all three shops, and the last one to see her hired her on the spot, stating she was exactly what they were looking for. She was put to work straight away, stocking the shelves. While she was busy doing that, she caught a 12-year-old girl stealing a chocolate bar. Oh, no, you don't, Missy, she scolded before the girl could leave the shop. What? asked the girl innocently. Don't try that innocent act on me, Darcy Fields. I know you have a stolen chocolate bar in your bag. Take it out at once, she scolded. No, I don't. No, no, I don't, whined Darcy. Oh, really? scolded Lily, reaching into Darcy's bag and pulling out the chocolate bar. Then kindly explain to me how this chocolate bar ended up in your bag. It clearly has its price label. She scolded and took Darcy to see her employer. Mr. Gary and Durant had reported her to him and reported her to him. Or Durante. He looked at Darcy. Do you have the money to purchase this chocolate bar? He asked her. No, sir. I haven't any money, replied Darcy, prompting Mr. Durante to call the police and report her for shoplifting, leading to her arrest on the charge of the crime. Thank you for catching her when you did, Lily, he said. Just doing my job, Mr. Durante, replied Lily, returning to her task. At the end of her first shift, she was paid double her agreed wage for doing double duty as a shell filler and a security officer. The next story along these lines will be the ninth in the Mainline Destiny series, but until then... If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and ha have us a magical time.
Hey guys, and welcome back to some magical story time for the Destiny Verse section. And it's now time for the 17th. No, sorry, 16th of these stories. But the 9th mainline story, Destiny 9. Here we go. London, 1954. Destiny Ball was a sprightly woman of 70 who lived happily with her family. It was a lovely summer's day and they were all at the beach enjoying each other's company. Destiny, Crystal, Norman, Dennis, Mitzi, Lily and Jake Burns were relaxing in the shade while Daniel and Sandra have fun in the sea. Jake Burns was Lily's boyfriend and Destiny was most pleased to see her granddaughter so happy. Crystal, on the other hand, was worried this might be a silly crush. Why can't you be happy for your daughter? Asked Destiny. Because I don't believe it's real. I think Jake might be after something more. Replied Crystal. Come on, sweetie, can't you just give him a chance to show, other, to show you otherwise? Asked Destiny. Knowing she was right about it. This left Crystal wondering if she was being too overprotective of her 16-year-old daughter, Des Destiny, took Lily and Jake somewhere quiet to talk about their relationship, during which Jake assured her he wanted to make Lily happy. She was happy with this and encouraged them to talk to Crystal and Norman about it, which they did, only to be given their full approval. They thanked Destiny for helping them out, which was, which she was only too happy to do. You have infinite wisdom, Grandma, said Lily. Sweetheart, I'm 70 years old now. I've been giving this kind of advice to children for over half my life. Destiny laughed and hugged her granddaughter. Daniel and Sandra finished frolicking in the sea and came to rest and have something to eat and drink. By this time, they were five and nine years old. Destiny, Crystal and Norman teamed up to reassure them about starting school. As they could see him, sorry, as they could see he was worried about it. I'll be there to look out for you, Sandra promised him. Destiny was really proud of her grandchildren for being so good to each other. Lily then added the fact that she'd been teaching them the importance of family values during her hours babysitting them the last few times she babysat them. I do these things because I love you both very much, she told, she told them. Destiny gave her a very approving look. You are a very mature and sensible young lady, she told her proudly. I learned it all from my own mum and grandma when I was growing up, replied Lily. Destiny was overcome with happiness at these words and hugged Lily tightly with love. I love you so much, dear granddaughter. I was starting, it was starting to cloud over so they packed everything up and started to make their way home after a lovely day at the beach. When they got home, Destiny helped Crystal and Norman get Daniel ready for bed while Lily had a bath and got herself ready for bed. Destiny couldn't be prouder of herself and her family. So that was Destiny 9. There are no more stories currently for this collection of stories, but as soon as there is another one, you know what's going to happen. Until then... If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have us a magical time.